Well, I don't think I have to be uh, that clever to, to read their minds. They watch those scenes and, and, and you can see uh, the eyes starting to get a little bit misty. But what I want to talk to you about as coaches is we've seen the celebration of the two tries in particular in the Rugby World Cup final. But uh, as the defence coach, how special was that period just before half time? where for phase after phase, your players defied England. They defended their try line as though their lives depended on it. What did that tell you about that group of players and where they were headed? No, uh, well, as a, as a coach, and I was lucky enough to be right next to the field as a physio, I mean, uh, the amount of commitment and the work rate and the effort and the attitude that went into the heats, was uh, was mind blowing. I think uh, in chasing the sun, um, Cheslin made the comment that it was the hardest that he heard hits, and and it literally was. I mean, a couple of times I thought they were over our try line, and then somebody would just get a shoulder stuck in and or get underneath the England uh, player and carry him back. So um, and and they just bounced up and worked and bounced up and worked. And I was nervous for Malcolm because uh, uh, Bongi was. <laughs> Bongi was off with concussion, so I was just thinking, and Rassi was in my ear, listen, Malcolm must just not get a yellow card, he mustn't get a yellow card, and I was trying to get Malcolm not to go to, because he's one of our best, best poachers, not to go for the ball and get a yellow card, and, <laughs> and uh, so yeah, it was hectic, and uh, but the, the work rate and the, the, and the passion that they showed there and the love uh, for each other, because defence is a tough thing, you know, it's not nice. Uh, for me, it's beautiful, but I don't think it's nice, I think it's nice nicer with the ball in hand and to play. Um, so it's a tough thing to do and, and, it, and it really shows what, what players feel for the team, what they feel for each other. And, and I think that's probably what it symbolised mm. for me. Swandile, looking at the footage in the coach's box and chasing the sun, you look so calm. Is it really like that inside? Yeah, you know what? Uh, <laughs> I, I try to, to always be in, in control of my emotions and uh, Knowing that next to me I've got Russ, who's focusing on every detail that is happening on the field. So you need to be calm because of he's always in the zone, you know. Uh, so yes, I, I, I try, I try. Unless there's something maybe that makes me nervous, then I will also get nervous and follow and get frustrated like Russ. But otherwise, I try to control my emotions in the in the, in the coach's box. There's a beautiful moment in episode five of Chasing the Sun where Russ turns to you and he says. Stoker, they can't, they can't reach us, eh? they can't beat us now, can they? It was after the second yeah, try. It was actually in the final, it was after the second try. So yeah. I remember we had Heschel on the bench at that yeah. time. So Rassi wanted to double check. Listen, Stoker, are you, are you sure that we've got the game? I said, coach, not <laughs> today. They will never come back. So, and to see a guy like Heschel Janjis, you know, if you ask him yeah. two years back, if we'll be in that position to play World Cup final against yeah. England, it was something that was massive for, yeah. for, for him also as an individual, you know. So once again, uh, one thing that I can take from the World Cup journey uh, under the, say, the, the squad and the management and the leadership of Rassi as, as a director of rugby at that time and, uh, and, and the head coach at that time is the fact that if with all the different backgrounds where we come from and all the diversity in our country, once we all aligned into a plan and we all aligned into what we want to achieve as a country, yeah. I think... Uh, no one will, will, will stop us, you know, because of, I can tell you now, Matt, I remember from even it, as if it was like yesterday, our first alignment camp with the players, what Rassi was trying to sell to the players, mm. you know, and then all of us, we had to buy, we, we bought into it, you know, and then it was a clear, clear direction of how he wants us to achieve everything. Mm. And uh, a lot of coaches, they will need probably four years or more than that to win the World Cup. Mm. And... Uh, we did everything in our powers, you know, to, to make sure that we support the players, like I said to you. And it was also good to see, uh, Jacques, the fact that we gave players responsibilities, you know, and the leadership group that we had, it was very, very strong. Guy like Thomas Dutoy, who wasn't playing week in, week out, that guy will always come up with a plan yeah. of how we can handle the refs, how we can handle the, the, uh, the, the, the malls in some of the games. So it was actually a team effort. It was the whole squad with the management and everyone was just there. And, 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 and we done everything in our powers, like I said, to make sure that we make our country proud. Well, it was a privilege to be on that jersey with uh, the journey with you and uh, to be here this evening. 
uh, one year on to reflect and, and reminisce. So thank you both. Mzwandi Lestik, Jacques Nienaber, assistant uh, coaches to the Springboks.